Hey folks, uh, it's the day after a big tropical storm and days of rain in Western North Carolina. Uh, I'm Josh Kelly. I'm a biologist with Mountain True and a board member with Eco Foresters. And uh, we're about to get going on the Woods Mountain Trail. And I'm Andy Tate. I'm the Eco Forester Director at Eco Foresters. And you're going to see some great differentiation and a lot of different forest types out here. Alright, so we're just getting started on the Mountains of Sea Trail uh, and haven't made the turn out to Woods Mountain yet and we're in a spot of very rich soil and rich geology. Uh, this is a south facing slope but because of the soil it's very lush here. Uh, really dense, kind of like a more of a cove forest but this is actually an oak hickory forest. And what we're going to see along this hike today is some diversity in geology, some really acidic uh, geology as well as this really rich geology. And uh, along this hike there's a couple of different major forest types. Um, and this is a, a pretty unique one at the beginning that is reliant on the geology here that's forming some richer soil, some deeper soil, and you can see the really dense and lush herbaceous layer here on this, what is a south facing slope. So this is not controlled by the aspect so much, but more by the soil and the geology. And um, pretty rich oak forest. Um, this whole area is inside of the Singe Cat Burn, which is part of the Grandfather Restoration Project. The Singe Cat Burn was one of the very first controlled burns done as part of the restoration project. And you can see that, if anything, it's, it's really helping the herbaceous layer to be more lush and dense in here. Um, so there are a lot of sort of rich cove species like Solomon seal and things like that behind me, like uh, Monarda. There's also a uh, false wild indigo here, which is more of a fire associated species. It's in the legume family. It's just starting to flower. It's got little purple flowers with, with yellow stamens. And so places like this that have this mix of moist and dry site species are some of the most diverse places in the mountains. So oak regeneration has been a huge problem all across the eastern U.S. Oaks are not regenerating, partly because of lack of fire. But in this hike that's had a prescribed burn go through at least two times now, we have lots of good red oak regeneration all around me here. To see this dense oak regeneration, some of these trees are definitely going to make it up into the canopy. We're going to have oaks here in the future, which is a great thing. the mountains to sea trail we made the turn out onto Woods Mountain and compared to earlier it's much more acidic here. The geology has changed, the landform is a lot sharper, we're on the spine of this sharp knife ridge and we're surrounded by Table Mountain Pine, blueberries, there's uh, Robinia hispida here blooming, beautiful little locust that's a fire associate as well and you can see the work of the controlled burning here. Uh, fire scars, uh, not much growth of uh, mountain laurel or rhododendron associated woody plants here. We've got lowbush blueberry, vaccinium palladum, we've got huckleberry, the Lucasia piccata, and we've got um, chickapin, uh, castania pumula. All right, so we're here on top of the Sinch Cat Ridge again. We've got Table Mountain Pine, which is a fire dependent species. You can see the burn scars in here. This probably actually is old growth forest. The trees aren't very big, maybe not even very old, because the fires come up here and could actually kill trees. The hot fires up here. The understory has been cleared off. There's some dead mountain laurel down there, but this lots of that ground covers up the blueberries we talked about in a really different habitat type. But this is really a unique ecosystem up here. Very important fire, fire really dependent system. Okay, here we have turkey beard, one of the fire dependent plants of the Appalachians. And it usually only flowers when it gets enough sunlight. And right here, because of the fire being on top of this ridge, it's getting plenty of sunlight. It's gonna flower and make seeds. We actually have a little bit of a stand replacing fire, which is you want to have some diversity. Usually it's a low intensity ground fire. Here it got hot enough and it killed some of these overstory. They're still fairly small trees on top of the ridge, they're pretty old. But that's a really good thing to happen up here is to have some fresh growth happen. These uh, table mountain pine cones actually need a fire to open up and release their seeds and regenerate the next stand of table mountain pine. This is a very rare and important tree species that needs fire to sustain itself. So this is a really good thing to see in diversity out here in the landscape. All right, the fire adapted plants abound here. We have uh, what's called sweet fern. It's not a fern, it's a shrub. Comptonia peregrina. 
And I only see this in, in places that get pretty regular fire, right along here with the uh, clammy locust here, the, or the bristly locust rather. Thank you.